This is Dr. Supreet from Department of Commerce, University of Delhi. So, we will be continuing our series that is our income under the head PGPP, which are as profits and gains of business and profession. So, in the very last class, we discussed about section 30, section 31, section 32 and section 35 wherein we talked about all different sort of your you could say allowances which are deductible under your head PGBP. So, today we will be continuing the series with our section number 36 which is you know the deductions which are allowed under the head PGBP. So, uh, within this very section of your 36 the first very section is yours insurance premium. So, when we talk about you know PGBP and when we talk about insurance premium, then we say that if there being any insurance premium that is there with respect to let us say any damages, any destruction that happened to the stock and that to you know that sort of your stock which is primarily used for your business or profession. So, in case there being any insurance premium payment with respect to the same, then you could say it will be allowed as a deduction. That means what? If you have any insurance premium diya hai, apne stock ko insure karane ke liye, with respect you could say you know protecting it from any damages, then you will get a deduction for all those expenses right which you pay off as a premium. Similarly, if stock ke liye nahi, agar aapne kuch bhi health insurance premium liya hai, employer ne and usne, uh, let's say employees ke liye health insurance premium liya and he is making a payment via any mode other than your cash. That means what ki aap cash ke bina kisi bhi mode se, chahi wo UPI ho aapka, chahi RTGS, any FT, whatever being there being a mode of your payment apart from your cash, then whatever charges as a premium the employer is paying for the employee's health insurance that is also allowed as your deduction. Okay? So, ye expenses deduction ki taur pe allowed as ka matlab hai ki ye allowed hai. Aap inne claim kar sakte hai apni profits mein se as your expenditure. Right? Now, similarly, agar koi aapka federal milk cooperative society hai, wo apni cattle ki lives ko insure karna chaate hai. Right? So, insuring those, you know, lives of their cattle, uh, livestock, right? So, uh, they pay a premium for the say. So, whatever premium that they pay onto the lives of their, you know, livestock, that insurance premium is also deductible. Similarly, when we say that the company has paid any sort of your bonus or the commission to its employees. Now, when we say na, that the bonus or the commission is being paid, then we mean ki it should not be like that ki instead of a profit, company is doing what? Ki it is showing the bonus as uh, you know uh, in uh, lieu of your profit that you know this much bonus or this much commission has been paid to the employee. Then it will not be deductible. The bonus has to be or your commission has to be in spirit, right? In spirit of there being a bonus only. It should not be in lieu of your profit. Profits, right. So, whatever bonus or whatever commission is being paid by the employer to the employees that is totally deductible, right. Similarly, when we talk about interest on capital borrowed, so whatever you know capital you borrow and you pay a you know a amount of interest corresponding to the same onto such capital. So, whatever they are being the element of interest onto such particular capital that element of your interest is totally allowed as your deduction. If only if that uh, you could say ki that you know loan or that amount that you borrowed it is primarily being used for your business or profession. Since we are talking about income under the head PGBP so you know it automatically states ki agar aapne capital borrow kar hai to uska jo capital borrow ka usage ho wo aapke business ya profession ke purposes ke liye ho na ki kisi aap ko ki ye personal expenses ke liye aap us uh, you know loan ko aap utilize kar hai. So, if you are utilizing the amount for your business or let us say for your profession then whatever being the amount of interest onto such capital borrowed that amount will be fully uh, you could say deductible right. Similarly, it says ki agar aapne 
खुद के ही कैपिटल को दिखा डेट मीन यू हैव यू नो शोन एन इंटरेस्ट विच इज पेड ऑन ओन कैपिटल देन इट इज नॉट डिडक्टेबल सिमिलरली वन ब्रांच पेइंग ऑफ द लोन टू अनदर ब्रांच राइट एंड ऑन टू डैट लोन यू आर शोइंग दैट द इंटरेस्ट हैज बीन पेड ऑफ दैट इज ऑल्सो यू कुड से कि नॉट डिडक्टेबल so it has to be uh, specifically the interest on capital borrowed and that to uh, your interest on capital borrowed should pertain to the profits or the you know uh, profits or the gains from the uh, you could say the uh, this uh, particular business and profession right similarly when we talk about uh, any discounts that we receive on to the zero coupon bonds right that discounted uh, zero coupon bonds will be allowed as a deduction whatever being the difference into the price rates that difference will be you know allowed as a deduction and that too on your pro rata basis pro rata basis means for whatever time period you have utilized or you have you know from the issuance to the redemption jitna bhi aapka time period hua utne time period ke liye aapne jo utilize kara us time ke liye hum keh rahe hain ki wo aapka pro rata basis pe compute hoga सिमिलरली अगर इम्प्लॉय कुछ भी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट करता है राइट टूवर्ड्स एनी योर लेट से कि आर पी एफ डेट इज योर रिकग्नाइज प्रोविडेंट फंड एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ योर स्टैचुटरी प्रोविडेंट फंड राइट सो यू नो एनी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन बाय द इम्प्लॉयर टूवर्ड्स द इम्प्लॉयज प्रोविडेंट फंड दैट विल बी अलाउड एज डिडक्शन सिमिलरली हम बात करते हैं हमने सैलरीज में पढ़ा था कि इम्प्लॉयर जो है वो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट करते हैं टूवर्ड्स दी एन पी एस ऑफ दी इम्प्लॉयज राइट सो सिंस इट इज यू कुड से यू नो एक्सपेंसिस फॉर द इम्प्लॉय डैट टू विच रिलेट्स टू दी बिजनेस और दी प्रोफेशन सो डैट इज ऑल्सो अलाउड एज अ डिडक्शन सिमिलरली हमारे कोई भी ग्रेचुटी फंड स्टाफ वेलफेयर फंड यू नो इम्प्लॉय इज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टूवर्ड्स द सेम फॉर दी वेलफेयर ऑफ देर इम्प्लॉयज राइट that is also allowed as a deduction um uh, next you could say let's say uh, the dead animals right we were talking about so any dead animals which are there you know um, into your let's say the activity of the business is such that you are you know keeping certain animals or let's say the dead animals so when you are writing of those animals whatever the expenses with respect to the same that will also be your expenses that are totally deductible similarly any bad debts any you could say that provisions that you have created for your bad debts but one thing that is to be kept into your mind while claiming for these deduction of your bad debts is that you know your bad debt should be such that they are totally in a nature of being irrecoverable that means you have tried your in very you know efforts but still you are not able to recover the amount of your bad debts right similarly it says uh, the bad debt should be pertain to the particular previous year in which you are claiming it as a deductible expenditure right similarly if you are showing that you know your business is now in not into you could say existence it is a discontinued business so if you are sort of you know claiming a uh, you could say deduction on to the same right for a you know business which is discontinued and you are claiming for the bad debt then that will not be deductible so it has to be a running business it has to pertain from the previous year right you have made every effort to in order to you know recover that debt right that is why it is irrecoverable and uh, you know if all these elements are there then we could say that you can uh, claim for the expenses with respect to the bad debts similarly there being any provisions that have been created specifically for these bad and doubtful debts that can also be taken up by for claiming you could say expenses from your profits or the gains of your business and profession similarly you know you have seen any employer uh, sending out or investing into the you could say amount into the family planning expenditures of the employees then that you know expenditure is also allowed as deduction but always keep into mind that whenever we are talking about the family expenditure it is allowed into five equal installments that means what ki jitna bhi aapka amount aayega family expenses se related wo aap five equal parts karenge and every year right you can claim for one part as an expenses which is deductible under your you know from your there is income right 
Similarly, if you have let us say transferred any amount to any special reserve that has been created. So, you can also claim an expenses or you could say uh, expenses are deductible for the same right. So, jitna bhi aapne uh, reserves create kare hain ya provisions create kara hai kisi bhi bad and doubtful debts ke liye wo aap claim kar sakte as an expenses right. Similarly, if I say ki aapne koi banking jo hai taxes ya cash transaction taxes diye hain security transaction taxes diye hain ya let's say commodity expenses diye hain so those expenses are also uh, totally deductible from your profits or that you generate from your business or any gains that you generate from your profession similarly i'd say uh, let's say any expenses by any uh, cooperative society which is into the let's say engaged into the manufacturing of sugar and for the same it is purchasing the sugar cane. So, any cooperative society engaged into such business setup, so whatever expenses incurred by the same that will also be deductible, right. So, uh, when we are talking about you know this particular section 36, we are talking about all sort of your expenses which are allowed as a deduction or you could say all these expenses are deductible from your profits and the gains that you generate from your business and profession. Now, if these are allowed as deduction means your profits would you know um, come down right it will reduce and the corresponding your tax liability will also reduce. So, you could see an impact of the same but you have to be very specific whether na expenses are related to your business or not or whether the expenses are related to the concern previous year or the relevant previous year or not right. Now, continuing the same thing that is your you know section 36 we talked about the specific deductions which are allowed as your deduction under uh, your PGBP. Similarly, there is section 37 which talks about the general deductions. Now, what are these general deductions? You would see a list of your deductions, you know, uh, but the very, you know, uh, you could say the basis for this particular section 37 is that it says whatever your personal expenses, they will never ever be deductible. If you are claiming any personal expenditure as your, you know, expenses which are related to the business, then it is not deductible. Similarly, if you are claiming, you know, any capital nature expenses, capital nature expenses are also not allowed as a deduction from your profits and gains of your business. Why? Because we always say that whatever being your expenses of your revenue nature that are, you know, deductible from your uh, incomes that have been generated from the business or the profession. Similarly, when we are talking about PGBP specifically, only your business related expenses are deductible. No other expenses can be taken up as a deduction from your head this PGBP. Similarly, the expenses it should relate to the your uh, relevant previous year, right? So, jab hum baat kar rahe hai, jitne bhi, you know, general deductions ki, it talks about ki aapke expenses, personal expenses honne chahiye, aapke jo expenses hai, sorry, aapke jo expenses hai, wo personal expenses nahi honne chahiye, aapke jo expenses hai, wo capital nature expenses nahi honne chahiye, and then to expenses should relate to business, it should relate to a lawful business, then it should, you know, uh, relate to the relevant previous year, then only those deductions will be allowed. Else, what will happen? Then you will not be allowed to take the benefit of whatever expenses which are not related to your business, right? And similarly, your uh, tax liability would remain the same, right? Now, since we specifically talked about a number of sections that deal up with the, uh, you could say, the expenses that are deductible or the allowances that are provided from your this PGBP. So, that runs from your section 30 that we talked about when we were talking about the rent expenses, right? Then we talked about the section 31, then we talked about section 32 that also pertains to your depreciation, right? Then we talked about the section 35 wherein we talked about the donations, 
made to any scientific research associations, any institutions, right? And now today we have discussed about section 36 that is the very specific deductions, you know, under which the your uh, you could say expenses we are saying that they are totally deductible and then coming on to the general deductions which were given under section 37. Now we are moving on to you know discuss about special disallowances that means whatever expenses related to the following sections they will be totally disallowed. So when we talk about section 40A, when we uh, talk about section 43B right. So, these sections are you know totally your uh, you could say disallowed or even for that sake we say section 40 subsection A that is totally disallowed. So, what all are these sections? So, starting up with we say you know 40 subsection A which talks about any amount of interest, any amount your royalties, any fees that you pay for the technical services to a person which is outside India that means your non residents so jitna bhi aap paisa in non residents ko de rahe hain chahe wo interest ke respect mein royalty ki ya koi bhi fee ki respect mein the employee or the person sending out the you know the such uh, income to that ena person he she is supposed to deduct the taxes on to the same and deposit the taxes timely to the concerned government right if you are unable to do so then whatever interest royalty fees that you are paying off to the person, it will not be allowed as a deduction. So, in case you want to claim all those expenses, right, as a deductible expenditure from your income, you are supposed to deduct the TDS onto the same and deposit the timely TDS to your, you know, government, right. Similarly, it says any sum which is either your salaries, which is either your could be any interest, any dividends, any winnings that you get from any sort of your let us say the lotteries right and that too you are paying off the income now to a resident. So, whatever income whether you are paying off the salaries, whether you are paying in any areas, any interest, any dividend, any lottery point right you are supposed to deduct the amount of taxes that is your TDS onto the source itself and then pay it off to the resident. If you are unable to do the same then whatever amount or whatever sum that you pay it off to a you know employee then that will be totally not deductible that means that will be totally disallowed right. Similar to that we would say default with respect to non deposit of your equalization levy. That means, jitni bhi specific services jo hum provide karte non residents ko, uske upar hamara ek equalization levi lagta hai. That levi is with respect to your digitalization charges or you could say the platform charges that the person pays. So, even in uh, you know you are uh, you could say you are defaulting, you are not depositing that equalization levi for whatever services that you are providing to the NR then in that case that expenses will be totally disallowed right. Similarly, when we say you know um, any royalty that being paid, any salaries that being paid without the deduction of your taxes onto the same, any taxes which are paid by the employer for the benefits that have been provided to the employee that is also you could say. Uh, not deductible. So, agar aap koi non monetary benefit provide kar rahe hai apne employee ko, uske related apne taxes jo hai employee ne pay off kar rahe hai, those taxes are not deductible. Similarly, any royalties, any license fee that you are paying it off, right, in case koi state government undertaking hai, so wo bhi aapka deductible expenses nahi hai. Similarly, when we are talking about section 40A, right, then we are talking about the excessive payments, then we are talking about the, ex the payments that we are paying apart from any other mode uh, apart from your you could say the cash right. Now, when we are saying section 40A, so jitna bhi paisa aap payment kar rahe hain apne kise bhi relative ko. Now, when we are talking about income tax act na, we have to be very specific about the term relative. 
here the term relative does not only mean that your immediate you know relatives or your siblings right here it means a bigger connotation it says you know in case a person is having a relationship with any other person let's say uh, in respect to a person having a direct or indirect control over the another person's company the person is a company to uh, you could say it's such a company wherein the second person is a director wherein both the part persons are partners or one is having a substantial share that means one is having more than 20 percent share into the equity share capital of the first company then whatever excessive payments that you are making to the relatives all these you know terms that we were talking about that will be your totally disallowed that means what you were supposed to pay 50,000 for any other transaction let's say you have taken into account so instead of paying 50,000 since it is a person who uh, you could say is having a good or a, you know great um, you could say uh, uh, relation to you right and you are sort of showing a biasness towards that thing and instead of paying of 50,000 you are doing what you are ending up paying 70,000. So that 20,000 whatever excess payment that you have made for a same set of your transaction that you do to any other person unrelated person that we call. So that 20,000 rupees that we were talking about that is the excess payment that will be totally disallowed right. Similarly when we say that you are making a payment right in cash then so uh, then you have to be very specific you cannot you know pay any expenses out of your cash more than exceeding your you could say 10,000 rupees so if any expenses which in exceeds your 10,000 rupees it has to be paid either through you could say you can say present times accordingly you can say UPI you can say account paycheck you can say a DD you can say a NEFT you can say RTGS but it has to be you know via these modes only if the amount exceeds 10,000. If you are not making the payment via these modes still making the payment more than 10,000 via cash mode then those expenses will be disallowed right. Similarly any contribution to any unapproved gratuity fund or non-statutory fund that is totally disallowed. So, कोई भी employer है, वो कुछ भी contribution कर रहा है किसी unapproved fund में, किसी you know non statutory fund में, so उसको उससे related expenses जो हैं benefit है वो नहीं मिलेगा, right? Similarly हमने relatives की बात करी या हमने expenses की बात करी जो exceed करेगा ten thousand को, it has to be done, it has to be conducted in a proper manner, right? If it is not the case, then those expenses will not be deductible right next we will be coming on to section 43b which also specifically talks about your you know specific disallowances and it says in a case when the tax payer is let's say uh, preparing the books of accounts right to and that too on your payment basis it says all your expenses will be deductible in that case on to the payment basis only right let's say to its provident fund for let's say any uh, special reserves that are being created so uh, you could say uh, those expenses will not be allowed until or unless the payment is made since the books of accounts are made on to the basis of your payment only so the deduction will only be allowed in the year of your payment so you know uh, if the payment is made into some other year some other corresponding year then that deduction will not be available to you right so that is about your section 40 subsection a uh, section 40 a section 43 b which specifically talks about all sort of your you could say the disallowances yani ki aap pgb pay mein agar isse related koi bhi expenses karte hain to aapko allowed nahi honge because either you are not following the very basis of charge in spirit or you are making the payment solely on to cash basis and uh, you know government is promoting this digitalization that is why you talked about those equalization levi which is available in case when a person is you know uh, paying or providing the services to any NR. So uh, government is giving a flip 
to all these uh, you could say your you know digital services your digital payment modes so any person even in the coming section when we'll be talking about the maintenance of your books of accounts even when we are going to talk about your auditing of the books of accounts you would see that the payments through these online modes it plays a very crucial role similarly you know when you are uh, you know uh, paying any expenses you have to be very specific that you know you should not use excessive you know payments through your cash made a uh, cash mode similarly you should make sure that when you are making any excessive payment to your relatives that will all totally be disallowed so there is no benefit of you know uh, paying an excessive payment to the relatives so this is all about your you could say the specific disallowances and the allowances that were available from your section 30 to your section 35 right or 37 specifically if we consider the uh, your general deductions right so we'll be continuing the series into the next segment thank you